I'm Ari here with First Updates Now at the New England Waterbury District, here with 177, first pick of the first seed. We're, they're here to tell us about a bunch of different mechanisms on their robot and what makes it special. Coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. So first, we have Greta here to tell us more about the arm and the intake. All right, so start us off strong. So we have an elevator here and we used a thrifty bot kit and we have a four bar linkage. Oh, is it enabled? <laughs> Where we have it, so when we use the elevator and it goes up, depending on what node we're scoring on, it changes the angle that we need it to without flicking our actuating wrists, which are these pneumatics right here. And our elevator is actually really cool, and with the constant four springs, we're able to make sure that it can pull up and down if something fails. Um, so I was a, <laughs> I helped design the intake. Um, we went through many iterations with the intake, um, starting with something that more looked like a claw, resembled a claw, with um, a bunch of different holes and different wheels that we went through so we could kind of change the um, distance between the holes to kind of figure out what worked best but ended up none of them working that great for both game pieces so we decided to change to something more like what you see on the actual robot now it is um, just a solid bar with the same kind of um, side panels we 3D printed a um, I can't get it up. <laughs> we 3D printed these um, white pieces here that have little um, protrusions that can kick up cones and cubes to help it stay into the intake. And that was kind of what refle was reflected here. Um, the main difference between this and this was just we changed the um, gear here, to like the chain here, to be... Uh, I'm sorry, what? Belt. Belt. I can't think of words today. <laughs> um, and then we, we changed up the wheels and things like that throughout every iteration, just kind of figuring out what worked best, what didn't work throughout the entire thing. Brought us to here. Uh, I'm Devin. I'm one of the programming leads on the team. Uh, so this year we're testing out a new system for our autos that we haven't used before called Path Planner. It allows us to get much more in-depth, detailed autos, and it allows us to make them much easier as well. Uh, they've been working pretty well so far. We're still getting a few kinks ironed out, but we're very happy with the progress we made. This is also our first year using a swerve drive. We were able to program it in about one and a half weeks, uh, which I am very happy about. It's been a lot nicer to work with than the tank. So is this a custom swerve, off-the-shelf swerve? Tell me a little bit more about your drivetrain. Uh, we use the Rev Swerve drivetrain, and then we have Falcons in it. Well, thank you very much. I know it's always fun to test out a new drivetrain. So let's see this robot in action. Can you take us through a few of the different set points in the robot? OK. Enabling. Arms coming down, intake in, intake out, intake out fast, actuating, elevators going up, watch your heads, top switch hit, coming down, it lets me, coming down, arm in, okay, presets, ground pickup. Stow, mid, stow, high, 
dough. LEDs, purple, yellow. Time for the wheels. Turning right, turning left, turning right, forwards, backwards. Strafing left and strafing right. Disabling. Straight. Okay, enabling. Disabling. That was beautiful. How did you come up with such a great and oriented uh, task list such as that? So, we just went through the different things that we were needed to test. So when we're going down and up, we're testing all of the limit switches to make sure that when we test our presets, everything is perfectly fine. We won't break ourselves by extending too far. Um, and then we just get everything else because the wheels are one of the more important parts because without wheels, you don't drive. So we test those and then LEDs is just for our signaling. And well, thank you, 177. Have a great time out in the elimination rounds, and good luck with the rest of your season. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charge Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash firstupdatesnow. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.